I button and we're broadcasting live on Twitter. And so greetings everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Sommelier Finance and Charm Finance AMA. This is our liquidity provider AMA uh, for Wednesday, June 9th. Uh, we're super excited to have uh, a great group of folks chatting with us today. Uh, with me is Zaki Mannion, co-founder of Sommelier.Finance. Hi, Zaki. Hey, how's it going? Awesome. And with us as well as Tom C and Max, co-founders of Charm.Fi, Charm Finance. Tom, Max, how are you doing? Yeah, we're very well, thanks. Yeah, uh, awesome. Uh, so, and, uh, so, and thank you very much uh, so for having us. Yeah, and thank you very much for joining. So uh, what we wanted to do, so Liquidity Provider AMAs is where we get to talk about the, uh, the projects and uh, that are in the Uniswap V3 world and that are helping liquidity providers sort of manage this new world of dynamic rebalancing, range order management, et cetera, essentially more complex market making strategies. Uh, Sommelier's goal is to use the Sommelier blockchain and protocol to help manage liquidity provisioning across multiple chains and across Uniswap V3. And we love to hear um, you know, from Charm Finance in terms of how you guys view it. So Tom, Max, will you introduce us to charm.fi and tell us uh, what you guys are doing for Uniswap V3? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, so Charm is actually an ecosystem of, of multiple products. So at the moment we have um, three products which are live on mainnet. So the first one is decentralized options, which we launched um, uh, a few months ago. And then the second is leveraged tokens. And then um, yeah, the third and the newest is um, these like Uniswap V3 books. Um, so kind of when we heard um, like the Uniswap V3 announcement, we immediately realized that like kind of that there'll be this new space, this new industry, like for um, intermediate protocols in between Uniswap V3 and the user, because um, for LPs on Uniswap, um, it's kind of a pain or um, it's not very easy to manage your own liquidity. Um, yep. You have to like watch your price, make sure um, mm -hmm. it doesn't move outside your range and so on. So we saw that um, there's this opportunity to build vaults, which manages this for users. And furthermore, um, like by, by using a smarter strategy to do this, then um, you can actually do it a lot better. So since then, um, yeah, we've been looking into how to build a good strategy. Um, and um, and uh, when you swap launch like about a month ago, then we, we were actually preparing to launch and then Two days after Uniswap V3 launched, then our Alpha Vaults went live, and mm -hmm. it's been running like um, for about a month now, and it's been Woo! doing a lot so far. Well, thanks. <laughs> All right, let's give a round of applause. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, and then now we're um, yeah we're working on how to improve it and to expand to more markets and so on. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's right. So uh, so I just like to add that um, so LP votes uh, in the context of DeFi as a whole uh, is extremely important uh, because it it, uh, it it can democratize investing uh, by allow uh, by allowing anyone to take part. So whether you are whale or, or a smaller retail investor. Uh, so and also uh, it reduces um, the trading cost uh, for traders. So which is fantastic news. Uh, uh, so for everyone. Um, so. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, so I think um, this is a uh, so really uh, so we just uh, so really excited about making this uh, a great contribution uh, to DeFi. That's awesome. Uh, I think one of the questions we would have is, you know, you guys have been first out the gate with uh, a dynamic rebalancing product. Could you tell us a little bit more about how it works so that and 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 at sommelier we you know we're really focused on a lot of the retail users people who don't have sophisticated uh sort of understandings of market mating concepts and i know charm you guys have done some really great work deep diving into the complexities of financial products i'm just curious if you know you you were to give a basic overview of how the vaults work for you know a retail user what what would that read like 
Sure. Um, so I'd say the main thing is like automation. So um, if you were like an LP directly in Uniswap V3, then kind of the steps you need to do is um, when you see the price like move a lot and um, when it looks like it might go outside your range, you would want yeah. to withdraw your liquidity from Uniswap and collect fees. Um, then you would want to like swap one token for another so that you're back to 50-50. Then you'd yeah. want to like um, come up with a new range and add it back in. And um, you would have to keep on like monitoring the markets and um, keep doing this like maybe once a day or once every few days. Um, and then if um, for most LPs, then the gas cost of doing this would kind of eat into their funds. Um, so kind of the most basic thing that Alpha Pulse does is it automates all this view. Um, so you don't have to worry about um, watching the market. And then also by pooling everyone's funds together, then it reduces kind of the gas costs for everyone. Mm -hmm. Uh, so also just like to add that, um, so you also don't need to worry about uh, picking ranges. Uh, so, and, and, uh, so, no, uh, uh, so no messy uh, to user interface. Uh, uh, it's extremely simple, it's minimalistic. Um, yeah. So uh, 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 that the uh, laziest of the laziest LP can, uh, <laughs> so, can, uh, so, can go, uh, uh, so can go in uh, and start right. to uh, uh, can go in and start to earn passive income immediately. Yep. Yep. It's, yep. So literally, so you go in within a few clicks, you are done. Uh, that is, that is excellent. Yeah. Question and follow up on that. Um, I was reading through the FAQ documents and noticed that uh, you rebalance via a keeper. Uh, and I was curious, what is a keeper? And I think you rebalance every 12 hours. So how does that work? Again, for the person who is, you know, um, not so sophisticated and, and curious about, you know, how these mechanics move underneath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so when in order to like do anything on Ethereum, to change the state of anything, there has to be like an account doing a transaction. So there isn't really a way to like say, um, uh, like run this function like um, every hour or so. So there always has to be like someone who triggers this transaction. And because we want um, kind of the rebalance methods to be called periodically, then that's why we need like a keeper who's which is just an account which um, runs this transaction like every 12 hours. Um, the 12 hours thing was kind of just chosen by back testing. And like, I think it can be improved a lot. So like, um, I've been doing like analysis and back tests to try to find like a better, um, a better number. Yeah. And, um, and actually like, there's kind of a better way of doing this, which is instead of rebalancing every like X hours, a better way would be to like, rebalance when the price is moved by X percent. Right, so, excellent. Yeah, that's, that's like, yeah, yeah, one thing that I've been looking into. Yep, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting, we're at Somalia looking into that as well. One of the things uh, we were looking at is volatility. Do you look at volatility as a metric for rebalancing for charm? Mm -hmm. So far, yeah. not yet. Um, kind of the theory is like, if you rebalance when the price has moved by X percent, then it'll be roughly kind of um, independent of how volatile the market is at that time. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, because you can kind of like stretch or compress time. Like, um, so even if the market is moving quickly, um, all the decisions are made based on like um, how much the price has moved. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think in the future, like um, yeah, and another thing is that at the moment we kind of want to keep um, everything very simple. Like yep. just make sure like nothing is missed. And yep. like uh, yeah, later on I think there's um, we'll look at things like volatility mm -hmm. and. Yeah, other ways to optimize it more. Got it. Uh, question for Zucky. Zucky, uh, when you look at Charm, you know, uh, finance, um, and you look at Sommelier, how would you say they're different, or um, the unique, you know, sort of differentiation between the two projects? I mean, so the kind of the goal of Sommelier is to, to extend this keeper concept. Um, into the sort of cosmos and like sort of hybridize the keeper concept with the cosmos validator set concept. Um, 
So I think like one of the, you know, what, you know, uh, the, the explanation that Max gave of why keepers are so essential to every sort of, to many sort of DeFi constructs uh, inside of Ethereum. Um, and so you have this sort of, you, you have this sort of interesting trade-off um, uh, space that I see, which is, you know, you can, you can have, um, you can have a keeper that has a lot of, a lot of power and authority and like has to make a lot of decision making, uh, uh, do a lot of decision making. You can have a situation where the keeper is essentially just pulling a trigger and not making any sort of decision, but then you have to bring all of your computations on chain. Um, or you can have what Sommelier is, is working on, which is the ability to have um, these computations live in a, in a Cosmos chain um, so that, you know, you do get these BFT guarantees around the keeper, you get uh, 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 sort of stronger guarantees of liveness, uh, but it does make, you know, it does require sort of this like more, somewhat more complex system of, of the gravity bridge and all of these things working together. Um, and so, you know, I think what always, you know, the trade-off space of DeFi is, is all of these things. It's, you know, it's how, it's where the automation lives and, uh, uh, and sort of what trust is placed in what parties uh, is sort of the trade-off space that we're all working to explore. Mm -hmm. um, and like, you know, it's fantastic that, uh, you know, Charm with their system has been able to get a, a, a live system in the market faster than we have with our, uh, with our validator set system, which is cool. Um, so, you yeah. know, I'm not trying to say one is better than the other. I'm just simply pointing out the differences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, curious, uh, Tom and Max, um, when you when we think about, uh, uh, again, executing the computation, to Zucky's point, you know, what are your views on, you know, computation execution via the keepers? Is it some, you know, is, is it scalable on chain? Um, how do you guys view it? I mean, I know that you, you're back testing and, and implementing changes. Um, is that something that will will have governance? I mean, how do you guys envision computation for uh, range, uh, you know, sort of the range order placement sort of going forward in the charm.fi world? Sure. Um, so they're kind of, yeah, different levels of decentralization. So um, yeah, at the moment, like our keeper only um, sends a transaction and then like the calculation of the range orders is already done on chain. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd say like, in this um, spectrum of like decentralization, we're like maybe like somewhere near the middle. Like um, I think like other projects are thinking about having the keeper calculate the ranges off chain and then like send them, upload them into the strategy. But um, for us, we wanted the strategy to be completely on chain. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think the the benefit of this um, is that like later on we can move towards being more decentralized. So for example, um, for the keeper, it could be done like using a keeper network, for example. Yeah. Um, yep. So that like anyone could be a keeper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yep. um, for example, when we upgrade the strategy, that could be done like through a time lock so that mm -hmm. users have enough time to like, um, to process the change and to withdraw their funds if they want. Mm -hmm. um, so I think our aim is kind of to, um, at the moment, like we're trying to be like very practical but I think later on, um, but like build stuff in a way that like where there's like a clear next step towards being more mm -hmm. decentralized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, uh, so just to add that, um, so our so our focus, uh, our focus, uh, so so right now, uh, is to build something uh, that works. Uh, so uh, uh, using uh, some very simple, uh, using very simple strategies. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, and to prove that this, uh, so this uh, strategy, uh, you know, uh, in fact, this whole new sector that uh, we have pioneered uh, called range, uh, range order strategies, uh, yes. it actually uh, can actually be profitable, uh, and it can uh, so and it, uh, and it can beat um, so uh, a four range uh, LP strategy. So, i.e., you de uh, deposit uh, your funds across the full range of prices in yep. Uniswap, uh, in Uniswap B3. Uh, so, yep. uh, so, and so far, the, uh, and so far, the results are looking pretty good. Uh, yep. So, so we were able to beat uh, so a full range uh, uh, so V2 style strategy. Um, oh, so, nice. yeah. So, uh, uh, and this is just using a very simple. 
um, so uh, uh, choice of um, so ranges and uh, placements of you know, base orders and limit orders. Uh, so we are, uh, so of course, as Max uh, has mentioned earlier, so we always uh, uh, new data always come in, and we always yeah. doing uh, analysis on uh, on these data, and we yeah. const uh, and we constantly testing on new ideas. So um, there's still uh, so even though it's, uh, the strategy works right now, there's still lots of scope uh, for improvement. Got it. Excellent. And congrats. One of one of the things I noticed is that um, you guys launched the ETH USDT vault um, as your first strategy. And I think it's sold out in like minutes uh, once you announced it. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Uh, Oversubscribe. Yeah. The USDC vault actually sold out uh, in a few hours. Uh, the USDT vault has sold out within 10 minutes. Right, that is amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, we were a bit uh, so overwhelmed uh, with the demand. So, so thanks, uh, 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 thanks to everyone uh, who tried us out. So, uh, so uh, that's what it means a lot to us. Congrats, congrats, and, and congrats to your community. Um, the Charm Finance community is an amazing community. It's super active. We participate yeah. both in Discord and Telegram, mm -hmm. and really appreciate that. Well, so you have so just to confirm, you have two active vaults. This is ETH USDT. And ETH USDC? Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah that's Got right. It. And and when you look forward um, to the next set of vaults, and um, if there's any alpha you want to share here for folks who will be listening, the first question I have is, what's next in the roadmap of vaults? Like, what, what should we expect you guys to be looking at to launch next in the coming days or months? Um, at the moment, so um, there are kind of two things that we're working on. So one is, yeah. um, we're getting an audit done. And I think this yeah. is kind of an important step before like adding more vaults or like increasing the deposit cap. Um, yeah. So I think like after this is done, then we'd consider um, just like deploying um, vaults for kind of the biggest pools on useful V3. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, uh, having higher caps. Um, the other thing is um, I've been like uh, trying to back test different strategies and trying to like find ways to improve it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think depending on the results of this, um, then yeah, that could decide uh, which pools we deploy vaults to. Mm -hmm. Understood to some analysis. Now, Charm is, uh, you know, uh, more than just um, alpha vaults. You guys uh, have mm -hmm. options and tokens. I was curious if you could yeah. talk about those two other features of the Charm.Fi ecosystem. Uh, yes, sure. Uh, so, bas uh, uh, so basically, as Max has explained uh, uh, earlier, so uh, we have three products uh, currently that has been launched by Charm. Uh, so mm -hmm. all uh, with all of them. Um, so the main aim is to helping uh, DeFi users uh, seek higher returns in different ways. Um, so basically, uh, if you uh, so if someone wants precise returns, then Charm options is best. Uh, if you want to go for leverage, then Cube so uh, Cube tokens is best. And for yeah. passive uh, and for passive returns is alpha votes. Uh, so and then basically um, the uh, the common strand uh, the common strand that kind of ties all of these products together is that uh, so we want to uh, we want every product to not uh, not just be a fork of something else. So mm -hmm. we want to uh, really um, so in, uh, so in, uh, so innovate and uh, so and uh, and then make a, a new contributions to the DeFi, uh, DeFi ecosystem. Um, so that's why we've kind of really challenged uh, uh, so challenged ourselves to uh, kind of first really understand DeFi. So uh, mm -hmm. so and then think about ways on how to push the envelope. Uh, so uh, uh, so uh, so uh, so that's why all of our three products. Uh, uh, I mean, it's more it's, uh, so it's designed from the ground up, basically from scratch. Um, so uh, so so far, right, all, all of them have had uh, pretty good tractions. So we're pretty excited by uh, uh, so uh, so by the results. That's excellent. And and I'm curious, seeing that the options and the leverage tokens tend to speak to expertise in finance, um, maybe you're able to share a little bit about your backgrounds and history in that allow you to essentially derive or, or build these financial products with, with such confidence. Oh, yeah. Um, before DeFi, then, I was working as a quant trader. So mm -hmm. actually, that helps me a lot, like thinking about strategies for Uniswap V3. Um, mm -hmm. For options and leverage tokens, I actually knew very little about them. Like, I'd mm -hmm. hardly ever traded um, either of them. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of knew just like the definition of 
was an option and was a leverage token. But I didn't really like know about option strategies or like the Greeks and so on. Um, so that's like something I had to learn. I, um, kind of the way I approached it was just like trying to build something that replicated like the the payoff of an option. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think my background has um, it's been more useful like um, working on alpha folds because mm -hmm. um, kind of there's actually like uh, like Uniswap V3 is actually surprisingly similar to like order books and mm -hmm. kind of these strategies which look at the microstructure um, of the market. Like many of them, they there's kind of a mapping to Uniswap V3 strategies. So the same, the same kind of ideas, um, they can work in both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think um, yeah, I think um, that's where like my experience has helped me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and for myself, uh, so my background, uh, so is in asset management. Uh, so, uh, so, bas uh, so bas uh, basically, I've been um, so using um, so option uh, type strategies uh, to uh, uh, so uh, so to manage um, so a, a lot of my portfolios. Uh, so basically, so that's why, so that's why I kind of when Max uh, first came to me with this options uh, ideas, and then uh, uh, and when he showed me the mathematical simplicity of it. Uh, I was kind of immediately drawn into, uh, so I said yes to him immediately. So uh, when he asked me whether or not um, uh, to come on board to join him in, uh, so in building Charm. Um, so and also in addition, um, so before asset management, uh, so uh, I actually, uh, so I actually read medicine. Uh, so uh, so at university. So uh, so uh, I guess uh, the idea of uh, making sure that uh, so whatever uh, that we put out. Uh, so actually help genuine uh, uh, like genuinely uh, so genuinely help people um so uh, so it's very important to me um so i'm uh, i mean that's why so right now um charm is kind of you know, it's not just a protocol uh, so basically right. uh, it's a new uh, ecosystem that uh, represents innovation and it represents education so understood congrats uh you know question for zucky so actually looking at options and leverage tokens um, and sommeliers approach to computation, is that something that validators can do as well as manage seller vaults for, for users? So I think there's a, there's a bunch of, there, so I think that there's, there's two things that we, that I think is, is sort of an, is important insights for liquidity providers, right? Um, Options typically represent like one of the best ways of managing the sort of inventory risk or impermanent loss mm -hmm. chat problem. Um, uh, it, whether or not, you know, e e either way. Uh, I mean, they're basically the same, a description of the same problem. And it's basically, hey, um, the price has moved uh, uh, against, uh, uh, you know, against my position. Now I, I'm holding uh, the asset that like, you know, either way, the the vault runs into the challenge of um, holding more of the asset that is underperforming. Like that is the, the inherent nature of these mm. uh, AMM market making strategies. And for the end user to be as profitable as possible, um, uh, you want to be able to um, make bets um, on the um, uh, make bets on the uh, on on on. Uh, either side of, uh, of the movement um, so that you can sort of compensate for this, uh, for, for this, uh, 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 for the, um, for the uh, market movements. Um, and so uh, I think you're going to see like more and more uh, like, you know, you've, you've seen this in the, um, in Sushi Swap um, as they have launched, uh, you know, uh, more and more option products that are integrated into the AMM. Um, you guys are doing great work on charm on charm finance, um, and you know I think Sommelier has has exactly the same because it's incredibly relevant to liquidity providers to figure out a way of having um, sort of payoffs that they can customize um, to their uh, uh, their their uh, their their sort of preferred outcomes um, and how much risk that they want to take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Agreed. Uh, question for Tom and Max. We're, we live in a multi-chain world. Uh, what are your thoughts We're, that liquidity is now on Polygon? Liquidity is now on Arbitrum. Liquidity is heading 
to optimism. Uh, liquidity will be in a lot of other spaces, uh, maybe even in Solana. How does that impact or how? what is the Charm.Fi position on these new destinations for liquidity, or even Binance Smart Chain? Mm -hmm. I'd say um, the aim of Alpha Falls is just to make a profit for the people who deposit into it. So wherever the opportunities are, like which, whichever chain they're on, mm -hmm. then um, yeah, we would um, we'll definitely look at like um, first back testing, like how would it do that, and then yeah, deploying on that if it makes sense to do it. You got it. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Tom. Sorry about that. Apologies. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, no, so uh, and for me, uh, so I think it's just too uh, too early to tell. Uh, so whether um, uh, what the traction, uh, what the traction, so we be like on, uh, so on, uh, so on, uh, so on the other chains, uh, and as Max has uh, had men uh, mentioned earlier, if uh, we saw that there is uh, there is significant traction uh, on any particular chain, and then uh, so we will naturally gravitate uh, towards that solution. Um, but uh, and currently right now, uh, the biggest traction is still Ethereum uh, on Ethereum mainnet. Uh, so that's why uh, that will uh, that will most uh, most likely be our uh, priorities uh, in the short term. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Max. Why don't we just see if we have any questions? Well, from I, 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 I mean, I have a question. I think there's an elephant that we haven't really talked about, <laughs> Go ahead. which yeah, is: let's do it. Is concentrated liquidity the future of AMMs? Whether it's Uniswap V3 uh, or yeah. all these other. Um, like I, nice. you know, we've both been in the weeds yeah. of this. Yeah. Every I think the industry is still trying to figure this out. What do you guys are yeah. these are these problems manageable? Is this is this where the future is going? Um, I'd say it's definitely better than V two. I don't know if it's the future, as in mm. like um, like the ultimate solution, like um, yeah. whether this is what everyone will be doing in five years. Yeah. But I'd say from what I know so far, I think it's definitely a like a step forward from Uniswap V2. Yeah. Um, it kind of combines the best of V2 and all the books. Um, mm -hmm. And just the way it lets um, LPs, uh, yeah, um, uh, like uh, add liquidity with like um, less tokens, like the capital efficiency. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's huge. Um, yeah. And then like the way that liquidity can like take any distribution in the market. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think it's uh, way better than V2. I don't know if it's um, like the ultimate, uh, yeah. like best possible in it. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I think that um, it's a very solid innovation, um, basically. So it uh, introduces a new way of doing things. Uh, but, uh, but, as with, uh, but as with all things, that there are trade-offs. Uh, with concentrated liquidity, so you get uh, a higher fees, but also higher impermanent losses. Uh, and the experience, uh, the user experience is not very friendly uh, for a normal LPs because you have to uh, always uh, constantly uh, to readjust your ranges. Uh, right. I guess uh, I think that there are not concentrated liquidity uh, will turn out to uh, 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 so whether or not it will be in the future, it very much depends on the ecosystem. Uh, how much other protocols can can kind of uh, can kind of innovate uh, to find the best trade off uh, that will work for DeFi users. Understood. Understood. All right. Next question uh, for Tom and Max. Uh, uh, we always ask for a little alpha for the community, um, both for the Charm Finance community and the Sommelier Finance community. Mm -hmm. uh, anything happening on any day that you know folks in the both communities should take a look at and make sure to keep an eye on? Uh, so I think the most immediate thing uh, is uh, our uh, is our audit. Um, so, ah, uh, right. uh, so we are hopeful that uh, an audit will be completed very soon. Um, so, uh, so and as soon uh, and then, uh, the moment we get some, uh, uh, we get details. Uh, so, uh, so we share, uh, so we share it with you guys. Uh, so that's for sure. Um, awesome. Yeah. So yes, that, that would be great. Yeah, so I mean, that will allow us to kind of launch uh, uh, a new votes uh, with higher, uh, 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 with higher, uh, with higher caps. Um, yep. So yeah, to allow uh, some more, uh, some more people to experience alpha votes. Excellent. So uh, Zaki, question for me from the community: the current ranges on uh, Uniswap V3 pairs on Sommelier pairings are they adjusted manually by the team? No. Uh, what we what we are providing is sort of automated real time technical analysis. Um, 
So we are looking at a 21 day window of prices and using that as a, as a mechanism to, uh, to, to, to place liquidity. Um, yeah. Um, you know, and, uh, we have, uh, we have new features that allow people to adjust those recommendations soon coming soon, but, mm -hmm. uh, Yep. That's where we are right now. All right. Is that coming this week, next week, next month, next year? <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, so I think that answers those questions. Um, let me just check um, anything before we jump. Uh, to oh, Tom. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, and Max, we have a question here. Uh, could I ask, after the audit, what's the plan for gaining cash flow? for charm and I'm not sure if that means fees or or something else but uh, that we have a question there I don't know if that is so helpful. It, so uh, is it cash flows in terms of kind of uh, kind of vent tokens <laughs> oh, yes, well, I know. so always so always so always so always say cash flows in terms of raising the cap for alpha so uh, 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 so our answers can be uh, entirely different uh, different depends on the scenario so uh, okay well let, why don't we take the exciting one when token okay. <laughs> uh soon tm so right that's good that's good <laughs> very very uh, good uh, 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 uh so joking i said uh, uh, i'm joking aside uh so after uh so our audit uh so yeah so that's the uh, uh, a bit, a bit, uh so the next big milestone that uh, we'll, uh, that both of us will be actively working towards because uh, so we know how important uh, the tokens are uh, for our uh, for our community. Uh, so mm -hmm. so and then we want our communities uh, uh, to to have a governance stake uh, in Charm uh, as soon uh, so as soon as humanly possible, basically because uh, because Charm from day zero. Um, so we um, so we wanted to this to be a decentralized protocol. Uh, mm -hmm. So we want this to be a decentralized a new kind of decentralized community uh, yeah. that uh, that pride itself on innovation on uh, so on educating its users um so and uh, so uh, so and the earlier that we can uh, so get our community who has stood by us from day zero and the earlier we can get them involved uh, uh, so the better so we can't wait to launch our tokens basically so uh, uh, so basically the bottom line is it really will be soon so uh, after so after audit Excellent. All right. And congrats. Okay. I think that's going to be it for us to stay under time. Uh, thanks very much uh, for the folks in the community uh, for asking the questions, Bardell, others. I want to say thank you for our guests, uh, Tom C and Max, uh, co-founders of CharmFi. Congratulations. Uh, we hope that we can do this again. Also want to say thank you very much, Zaki, co-founder of Sommelier, for bringing Sommelier to life um, and bringing Cosmos uh, to Ethereum uh, via the Similar protocol. Looking forward to all the new features that we have to bring to liquidity providers in the space on Uniswap v3. Thank you all and have a great weekend and great week. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, oh, great. Thank a lot you very much. oh, great. Thanks very much, guys. Uh, so, uh, uh, and it's really a pleasure to talk to you guys uh, and, the, uh, and the Similar community. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's it for us. Bye bye. <laughs>